Well, we sure have a warm one today, so I'm going to try and get this job done as quickly as possible because it's hot and super bright. Anyways, uh, aboard this beautiful 1998 uh, Sea Ray 370 Sundancer, I discovered that last year when we bought the boat that one of the fuel gauges is not reading correctly. That is the starboard side. How do I know it's not reading correctly? Is because when I fill up both tanks with gas, the starboard one is still showing off on the gauge the the port side reads full but the starboard never reached full it was between three quarters and full so uh we have the same problem in our last boat our 370 or sorry our 330 sun dancer and i i put up a video of uh, replacing the sender on that which is what i'm going to do for this one now um it's an easy job it's an easy fix this was actually cheaper than buying a new gauge so <laughs> i'm really hopeful that this is the problem here I feel like it so anyways like i said just back to this project i'm going to try and get this done as quickly as possible because i'm hot sweaty and it was a long day at work for me today so you don't need to know that so what i'm going to do is jump down fortunately there's lots of good access on this boat to get at that sender on the starboard side Look at that gorgeous sunny day, man, and hot. It's like summertime and we're only the start of June. So here we are, engine compartment. Uh, one of the beautiful features of this vessel is that the side panels, uh, this one being the starboard side, obviously because that's the one that I want to get at, uh, this panel is completely removable. So I didn't, I haven't taken it off the boat, I just got it out of the way and I don't have to move or open any of the other hatches to get at it. So here we are. Um, like I say, I did this job in our last boat, our 330 Sundancer, but that boat was a lot more compact. And uh, access to it was in a hatch, and it was really, really difficult. Uh, if I feel like it, I'll leave a link in the description. Otherwise, it'll be where this one is in the playlist of my How I Did It Boat Repairs and Upgrades video. So uh, you can look at that. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to just have a quick look yeah that looks like it's got the same footprint and then it's just a matter of uh, removing these bolts and then pulling that unit out and I have to measure the depth of the tank and then adjust this new replacement gauge to uh, to accommodate it so just for reference this is the unit that I got the replacement unit which is the same one that I used on the last bolt and it worked beautifully and this is very reasonably priced it is a C choice aftermarket fuel level sender and this one is labeled uh, tank, tank depth from 6 inches to 27 inches and this one our actual tank is oh I should know that I think it was around 23 or 24 inches so I'm going to have to uh, adjust the length of it so that the float uh, will move freely inside the tank it's a very very simple uh, system all it does is that as that tank goes up and down, or sorry, as the float goes up and down and rotates, it will just reg register lesser or greater resistance in this thing and send that to the gauge. Air conditioner's on. Now the wiring on the center couldn't be more easy. This is the power lead, we'll, sh we'll call it. And then that is the ground. So just remember which goes which. I mean, it's pretty simple to, uh, to determine which is what and the new one is pretty much the same although I see that the new one has one of those uh, clippy do's so I guess I'm going to have to replace that right those uh, quick plugs whereas this one is screwed right to the unit and I don't see a way yeah see they pop riveted that one on so I have two choices, screw out, or sorry, drill out that pop rivet, or put the correct uh, spade connector on this, which is what I'm gonna do. So there is the measurement of the tank, and I'm gonna call that at 23 inches. It's 23 and a tiny little bit, but for, you know, for, for, my, for my use, we're calling it 23 inches. So the instructions say to measure, because I have to adjust this arm length that's why it's you know from 6 to 27 inches it'll work so you're supposed to measure from the bottom of the uh, blah 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 from the inside bottom to outside of the top tank minus half inches so we said 23 right so I'm gonna say 22 and a half and this piece is going together 
and you're supposed to measure from the bottom of this cap or the the top the mounting plate to the bottom of the float and adjust to desired tank depth so I'm gonna get my 23 inches I gotta put the camera down for this because you know I'm good but I'm not that good <laughs> now this panel is making a great workbench because I have the uh, bottom of the sender up against this edge and then down my tape measure and what did I tell you 22 and a half inches to the bottom of the float which is where I have it there so I've cut out the excess uh, for my instance I shouldn't actually say what it is because if somebody else does it on their boat oh boy you told me to cut out too much no I didn't anyways uh, and then tighten this together with that screw and yes cursing the flathead screw if Mr. Robertson was an American we, nobody would ever see flathead screws anymore nobody but he wasn't he was just a Canadian so that doesn't count so anyways I have this now set at 22 and a half inches depth so that is good to go I just have to uh, release the uh, grounding wire on the existing unit and put this little spade clamp on their piece thing connector wire doohickey Anyways, while I uh, put these screws back in, I have an interesting, funny, and sort of sad story uh, regarding uh, float switches and gas tanks. And our very first boat, or sorry, not our first boat, our first Sea Ray, which was a, um, a 1976 model year 240 SDA Sundancer, a laugh cabin boat. Those were the days before I was as adventuresome adventurous and so far as doing my own repairs and we had an issue with that boat and it was uh, uh, the problem was at speed the boat ran fine started fine ran fine all the time however at full bore the engine would just cut out inexplicably it would just die and then you know let it sit for a minute or so and then it would it fire right back up run perfect no issues but again at full speed the engine would just cut out and so like I say back then I wasn't doing uh, my own mechanical repairs I didn't have the confidence to do it what did I know about boats so I had the mechanics at the marina where we were at back in the day Keswick Marine if anybody knows that not Keswick Marina but Keswick Marine back in the day was called and uh, so I said listen this what the issue is these are the symptoms this is the only symptom it ran fine dies and then starts back up and then when I go at full speed it, it it dies again so after uh, about three weeks of them troubleshooting and replacing parts and spending lots of money um, where did we start where did we start new fuel pump I think was the first thing that they tried and then uh, full tune-up they tried and this that and the other thing and to the tune of almost three thousand dollars at that point and to no avail it was still not working so I think it was during the week one night we went to, to the boat and I took it out for a spin just to see how uh, how it was with the changes that they had made. Still didn't work. So I said, listen, I don't care what it takes. Just fix the problem. So they said, all right, well, we're going to try, I don't know, something that they had to do down in the fuel tank. And so they, they took off the fuel sender. I don't know what they were doing exactly, but anyways. And they discovered a tiny piece of foam stuck down in the fuel tank. I'm talking styrofoam. Now that boat back in the day, don't know why they did it, but Sea Ray put in a buoyancy foam in the 
top section of the boat or in the engine compartment at least and somebody at some point a prior owner mechanic do it yourself or whatever decided he was going to probably replace the sender uh, well not this one but on that boat and he had to actually cut away some of the foam because it was just sprayed all around the uh, the whole back section of that boat and again it was supposed to be buoyancy I guess if you were sinking that was gonna give you an extra couple minutes but um, yeah so when he cut away that buoyancy foam clearly a small piece fell into the gas tank unbeknownst to him and the problem was that it was just the wrong size whereby it would get stuck when there was a lot of pressure when there was a lot of suction a lot of draw from the fuel pump um, it would get stuck in the fuel line but not big enough to go right through so what happened was full pressure full throttle it was sucking that piece of styrofoam up into the uh, pickup tube <laughs> and uh, killing the engine starving the engine of fuel engine dies that piece of foam will and settle back into wherever its happy place was in the uh, fuel tank start up the boat ran fine no issues and again full throttle that thing was just like a little suction cup and it was starving the boat for fuel and so that tiny little foam piece of foam <laughs> cost me about three thousand dollars so as a result of that uh, craziness I decided it was time for me to start working on the boat myself as much as I could with the intention was that you know I can do as much as I can and if I get stuck I can always call a mechanic right but here we are now it's my turn to play in here <laughs> okay I gotta get a little, a little closer to this this is not so here we are with the finished product not that much to it just those screws gasket feel it's nice and uh, seated all the way around which is a good thing uh, wires back on and that's all so like I just said nothing more to see here let's go try the gauges okay going past this disheveled helm and let's see starboard side it's showing about half, and this one was going higher. Nothing. Why is that showing nothing? Come on. I don't want that. What the hell? So what to do now is I'm going to disconnect the old gauge. This is what I was talking about, how it's like rusty in here. I may have showed this earlier. I don't know earlier in the video, but also earlier in time, because like I said, this is going on two weeks ago that I first started this project and gave up in frustration. Um, so this one has clearly gone bad because this is a little ooky in here. I thought that this had rusted right through, but I cleaned it off with my knife a little bit, and it doesn't look too, too bad. So I'm just thinking it's just that pendulum inside. I'm sure if somebody really, really wanted to try, you could take this part, clean it, make it all happy again. Um, I might do that just for fun, but in the meantime, I'm going to connect these wires back up to the new gauge and order another one, order a replacement, because clearly that one's no good. Alrighty, here we have the internal workings of this sender switch. And as I was trying to explain to you, it's like a pendulum. I'm trying to do this with only one hand. Um, yeah, you see as that, there we go, as that travels along there, it hits different areas along there and makes that connection. But the problem that I've discovered with this is there's this springy thing which is broken and it snapped. That's probably what the issue is. And if I solder that, there's no way that's gonna go back together. I'll happily, so this thing is shut. It's just like a very fine spring metal and that's hooked onto here and around there. And I don't know how it works, but 
it does and it's not anymore so it's garbage well you've heard the old saying third time's a charm <laughs> well let's hope so here we are uh, fuel sender number three uh, the third one that I've had well the second replacement unit over the last three weeks um, so that one you've already seen has not done anything except make the gauge go backwards so I have a similar one probably made by the same company I don't know Paul why are you going with these cheap ones this is what I'm doing um, as I mentioned before it worked fine same similar that I put on the last boat went in no issues and worked for I think four seasons afterwards and I'm gonna guess it's still working today so I'm gonna try this one and I'm not gonna show you how I'm gonna set it up or do the measurements because it's it'll be the exact same procedure procedure that I already showed you with that failed unit so I'm just going to uh, try it and see what goes on now before I put it into the tank and start cutting it all up to make the measurements I am going to connect the leads and just see if I can make some sort of action happen without actually putting it in the tank. Now before I even install this thing, this is the newest new one. And again, see this how it works. And see the GoPro is working a lot better than <laughs> trying to hold the handheld camera and do this at the same time. But you see there's just as this float goes up, you know, that's a full tank, half full, empty. So as this sweeps through that pendulum, we're just gonna call it, that's what I'm calling it, so it's, it's called a pendulum. It will give the different readings based on resistance. And as everybody knows, resistance is futile. So what I'm gonna do, I've got this uh, my own meter here set. I don't know if you can see that. There's a little bit of reflection. Let's see, does that look better? trying to make it so I can actually see it so I'm just gonna put these on here I don't have the leads obviously hooked up that go up to the gauge so I'm just gonna put the positive side there oops boom and negative anywhere because it's it's just this is just grounded to this unit anyways so can we see that do we have a reading Houston, do we have a reading? So, this is, we're gonna call it, basically, that would be a full tank. Can you see where that pendulum is? That arm is swinging. So, trying to do two things here at once. So, full tank-ish. 190 ohms, basically, and as this arm swings up hopefully you can see that let's call that half ish tank it's at about 119 120 as it goes closer to full it's dropping down to a full tank boom full tank 30 ohms okay drop, drop that back down again hopefully you can see that okay so that's very positive news I was just doing this and you saw the gauge uh, doing its thing so that's fantastic so I'm gonna disconnect this uh, pull this one well actually I'll get the float set to the proper level again I'm not going to show you how to do that pull that one in put this one in pull that one out put this one in and uh... so there's one step that I didn't show you when I uh, replace that one which I'm going to point out now before I put this in because when I take that out I want to get this one in position as quickly as possible because it's very hot today again and uh, I don't want the uh, fumes to be escaping so these senders and don't ask me why I don't know but they are orientated a certain way because these holes are not equidistant apart from one another so they're somewhat skewed a little bit so what I did make sure the new one's going to line up properly let's take the gasket and line it up with the uh, bolt heads well the screw heads to make sure I know what the orientation is going to be and I marked this on the tank and I marked it I don't know if you can see that I put that same mark on the uh, on the gasket and then lined up 
the new gasket with the new sender to uh, transfer that mark on to the new sender. And uh, probably no uh, coincidence, but the way this is gonna sit, it's <laughs> the serial numbers are in the exact same spot and even the logo. Now this is a different logo from that one. That is uh, C whatever, I can't quite make it out. Look at the beginning of the video because I don't have that box anymore here. So uh, whatever that is and this logo uh, for Muller. So I haven't looked at the numbers, but yeah, they're slightly different. So anyway, so they all line up. And as I mentioned before, I'm pretty sure these things are all made at the same spot and just giving a uh, different branding. So hopefully uh, this one works a little bit better over time. So anyways, with this line lining up that way, you will notice that the float will then want to operate this way, which will be counterproductive because when it's in the tank, it'll hit this side of the tank. So what I have to do is loosen this nut off and then rotate it 90 degrees at a time. This, so it's lining up. So the float is going to be orientated front to back, right? Because I want the float, sorry, I want the float to come up this way in the tank. Uh, so again, it's been three weeks since I did this last. I don't recall uh, if I showed it to you. So if I did, I won't show it to you again, but I'm going to show it to you now. Um, just one has to consider how the float, or sorry, how the sender is going to be sitting in the tank up and down and the orientation of the float itself because this float, I want it to bob up and down like it is without hitting my foot. So I have it orientated at uh, basically a 90 degree angle to the sender itself. Sorry, when it's in the tank, that float will come up like this. So the last thing I'm gonna do is just spin this little guy right here, this little mounting thing, which looks like it's as cheap as the day is long. And there's another potential failing point. Um, now, given the fact that that is just, uh, is it brass? I don't think so, but that, screw is just regular steel and I can see that rusting out over time hopefully not in my lifetime because I don't want to have to do this again but anyways um, so if this were to rust just as a little aside um, not sure if you guys know this but on these built-in tanks it will show the capacity of how much how many gallons and or liters it will take to fill it there's that but the actual usable fuel is going to be less than because the manufacturer will put in the pickup line for uh, on the fuel pump above the bottom of the tank so it's not potentially sucking up any grime or rust or <laughs> rotten out screws just so you know okay now the first thing i gotta do what do i gotta do kitties what do i have to remind myself to do all the time is turn the ignition breakers on because yes we have a little kitty cat sometimes he turns the engines on all by himself oops thank you goes back okay can you just turn those uh breakers on for me there honey okay again port starboard this is the one that we want to see go up to roughly half ish Okay. Ta da! Just under half. Oops. This one should say about the same. Look at that. Because this is the one that I always suspected was working properly. This one, not so much. But, anyway, so uh, it's another Christmas miracle. So it is now working again. I'm very happy about that. As you could well imagine. So there we go. This is the uh, old new unit. Do not know why it's failed. Um, I have my suspicions, but because I'm thinking that this is, that looks like the exact same mechanism that is in the latest new one that's on the boat. Everything else is the same. The only difference is this one says Sea Chase Choice on the top, whereas the latest one says Mula. Herr Mula. So I'm going to package this one up into the box with the new one and see if we can uh, send it back. If not, $80 
uh, not well spent. So I will leave a link in the description. Again, this is an Amazon product. I'll leave a link in the description for this, and I'm <laughs> I'm sure it's going to work well. I'm guessing that that was just problematic in that one for whatever reason from the factory. Maybe it was a slow day. Maybe it was a Friday or a Monday. Who knows? But I must say that the instructions on the package on this one are a lot more concise than on the one that I just took out, even though I'm pretty darn sure they are made by the same company. This is uh, actually it's a part of Sierra. Well, wow. and look at that. It says the shape of this package is a trade part trademark of Muller Marine. That's pretty funny. Oh, actually, you know what? Made in the USA. There's a surprise. Wow. Well, that makes me feel better, actually. Yeah. Okay, so there goes my suspicions about uh, uh, Eastern products. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So, there you go.